Hello there. Did you sleep well last night? According to study by startsleeping.org, almost half of the Americans in their 20s get less than 6 hours of sleep per night, and in Japan, this average is barely 5 hours and 59 minutes. Let's start by imagining you run into an alien from a different galaxy, whose species never even heard of sleep. So you spend a nice day together, you learn a lot about each other, but you realize that it's getting pretty late and you're getting very tired, and you start to realize it's time for you to go to sleep. But how would you explain your extraterrestrial colleague what sleep is? Uh, hey man, look, I gotta go to my bed where I lay flat for 7 to 8 hours, losing consciousness in the process so that my body can help me imagine weird things ranging from memories to giant potatoes chasing me. Uh, don't worry though, I won't remember half of it later, so... Uh, See you in a bit. As awkward as it gets, if we assume you live for 75 years, 25 of them you'll spend doing exactly this. Hello and welcome to another episode of Dr. Gibberish. Today we'll take a closer look at sleep. What is it? Why do we need it? And what would happen to your body if you suddenly decided you don't want to sleep anymore? Before we start, please consider subscribing to our channel, so you never miss a video like this. It will also support the channel and help my videos to reach more and more people. Back on topic. Sleep, by definition, is a naturally recurring state of body and mind, characterized by altered consciousness, closing us off from most of stimuli, reducing muscle activity and interaction with surroundings. When we sleep, our body alternates between two phases. Non-REM sleep, also known as deep sleep, during which body temperature and heart rate fall and the brain uses less energy. And REM sleep, also known as paradoxical sleep, representing a smaller portion of total sleep time, with the latter being the main occasion for dreams and nightmares. But nightmares aren't real. Or are they? REM sleep, also known as paradoxical sleep, although it's primarily known for what it stands for, rapid eye movement, has a very unique feat to offer. A virtual paralysis of your whole body. A bizarre state where a person walking in the middle of REM sleep can remain stuck between dream and reality for a short period of time where dream creatures and sensory projections can overlap reality, which combined with inability to move can lead to blood-chilling experiences straight out of a horror movie. But let's talk more about the very well-known feature of sleep. Dreaming. These elusive first-person experiences happening primarily during the REM phase tend to seem quite realistic while we dream them, despite often being outright bizarre. They really take creativity of our brains to new levels, combining elements within our minds which normally would never go together. Faces, places, events and memories we experienced can shuffle and combine, including sensations of all types, especially vision and movement. Safe to say, most of us have experienced dreams we remember for their absurdity, like that one dream I had in primary school when I was being chased by giant potato peels in a giant sink. Don't judge me, there are many hypotheses narrowing down possible functions of dreaming. Most notably, Freud suggested that dreams are symbolic expression of frustrated desires that are being delegated to unconscious mind. Although, personally, I don't really see how being chased by giant potato peels in a giant sink would be my delegated hidden desire. Go away! Renowned American psychiatrists John Allen Hobson and Robert McCauley, on the other hand, suggested that dreams are a result of random neurons firing in cerebral cortex during the mentioned REM period. That would somewhat help explain the absurdity and irrationality of dreams, and according to this theory, our forebrain would then create a story to re-reconcile and understand the nonsense presented to it by cerebral cortex. But none of it actually explains why do we need to sleep. I mean, don't take me wrong, dreams can be very pleasant. But why do we actually need to fall asleep? And what would happen if we didn't? 
The most amazing effect of sleep is restoration. Human organism physically restores during sleep, healing itself and removing metabolic wastes in form of reactive oxygen species, such as peroxides, superoxides, hydroxyl radicals, singlet oxygens and alpha oxygens, which when they build up when we are awake and active can be damaging to our cells. Our brains especially require sleep for restoration, so the mentioned buildup of metabolic wastes can be removed without lowering our mental capacity, whereas other parts of our bodies can manage these metabolic processes on their own when we are awake. These processes usually take place in a non-REM phase, also known as deep sleep. Our body temperature, heart rate and oxygen consumption are then much lower, which makes the mentioned restoration process much easier for our bodies. But what will happen if you stopped going to sleep? We can understand the importance of sleep by taking a closer look at sleeping disorders such as insomnia and sleep apnea, which can impact our body's ability to sleep, but one of them is especially blood chilling. Fatal familial insomnia, FFI for short, is an extremely rare genetic disease that starts with insomnia caused by mutation in codon 178 of prion protein gene, similar to this carried by people affected with familial Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease. FFI results in panic attacks, paranoia and phobias that increase over initial period of about 4 months. Then things get worse. Hallucinations start and panic attacks become more severe, increasing even more over the next 4 to 5 months, after which people affected with FFI lose ability to sleep completely, usually also dramatically losing weight in the process. And as mentioned earlier, toxic metabolic waste builds up in their brains, with body having no means of removing it effectively, dementia and loss of abilities follow soon after. Over the last stage lasting 5 to 6 months, the person becomes more and more unresponsive and ultimately dies. But most disturbing perhaps is the fact that there is no known treatment or cure to fatal familial insomnia. Even though attempts can be made to force affected person into a medicated sleep, in 100% of cases, diagnosis means certain death, with life expectancy ranging from 6 years to just under 7 months. Luckily, this horrible disease is also extremely rare. Only two dozens of cases in total have been documented in medical literature. Collectively, all prion diseases such as FFI and mentioned Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease affect only one person in a million in general population. What's also interesting, humans are the only mammals intentionally interfering with their sleeping pattern. We are the only species to consciously delay sleep to focus on other things. Movies, video games, school assignments, all these can effectively distract us from sleeping, ultimately knocking us out of our own sleeping pattern. That's why it's important we remember and constantly remind ourselves how important sleep is, how necessary it is. Advised length of sleep for adults is between 7 and 9 hours, but it's not a one size fits all. Some people don't experience any tiredness after sleeping only 6 hours, whilst others, like my humble self, without having slept at least 10 to 11 hours can't function properly at all. It's very individual and all of us should approach it individually. So next time you sleep for 14 hours straight because something kept you up all night, don't feel guilty about it, it's what your body needs. And what was the longest sleep you've had? Be sure to leave it in the comments below and please tell us why do you think your body needed that. And please do yourself a favor and try to sleep as much as your body needs tonight. With that one simple trick you'll make the rest of the week much more enjoyable, I guarantee. With that being said, I think I could use a nap myself. But before you go, if you'd like to see more videos like this one, please consider subscribing to the channel, this way YouTube will automatically show you my new videos so you never miss one again. And this way you'll also support the channel by helping my videos to reach more and more people. That's all from me, I'm Alex and you are watching Dr. Gibberish. See you next week.